Hey guys, Ashley D. Will here, and today we're talking about biblical righteousness, and just want to say I'm not obsessing over this topic, and I'm not beating a dead horse, I'm just, because I've done many other videos about this at all different angles already on my channel, but this I'm feeling led to do, just, it's a very particular point, but everything hinges on this. So people have extremely inaccurate views of righteousness, biblical righteousness. And so I'm just wanting you to get the bullseye and to hold on to that and to remember that, okay? Because it's so easily we just start moving away from it. So this is biblical righteousness, no matter what you've heard, no matter what you've been taught, no matter what so-and-so says, this is biblical righteousness, okay? We're going to use only the scriptures and in context, right? So let's just look at this briefly. So first I'm going to read you two scriptures, and then we'll go from there. So the first one is 2 Corinthians 5.21. And this says, we've been over this before, it's a really wonderful verse in chapter uh, 5. For our sake... He, God, made Christ virtually to be sin who knew no sin so that in and through him we might become endued with, viewed as being in, and examples of the righteousness of God, what we ought to be, approved and accepted and in right relationship with him by his goodness. Okay, that is 2 Corinthians 5.21, and now I want to read Romans 5.19. For just as one man's disobedience, this is in the Amplified, by the way, failing to hear heedlessness and carelessness, the many were constituted sinners. So by one man's obedience, the many will be constituted righteous, made acceptable to God, brought into right standing with him. Okay, so we're talking about righteousness, biblical righteousness, and I want to just add in that biblical righteousness is black and white. It is very black and white. And let's read uh, also James 2.10 before we go any farther, because this will kind of show you how black and white this really is okay it's very black and white okay here it is um james 2 10 says for whoever listen to this for whoever keeps the law perfectly as a whole but stumbles and offends in one single instance has become guilty of breaking all of it. Do you hear the black and white? Okay, the righteousness, biblical righteousness, is very black and white. It's all or nothing. It's perfection or condemnation. There's no in-between. So you, as a believer, have to decide what you believe. Do you believe the scriptures? Well, then that means that you are righteous period. So this will go to the heart and it will help you to weed out some unbelief and some lies and maybe some self-effort that's in there. But so biblical righteousness is black and white. You're either a sinner or you are righteous. There's no in between. All right. So let's say this is Christ over here and this is you. You are in Christ. When you are inside of Christ, in Christ, you are automatically fully righteous all the time. You, as a human being, by faith, you are righteous fully, completely, 24-7, 365, by no, nothing that you have done, but by believing with the faith that God has given you and what he has done and his goodness, all right? So here's Christ. Here's you. There was a hundred, well, before you were in Christ, you were not in Christ. Okay, so here's Christ over here in Calvary, and here you are. Now, 
what happened that 2 Corinthians 5.21 is showing us is that there was an exchange. All right, so Jesus Christ was 100%. I'll just do a big R for righteousness, okay, or for righteous. Jesus Christ was 100% righteous, and you had 100% sin, right? Because James 2.10 says it's black and white. You either have sin or you're perfectly righteous. Jesus Christ is perfectly righteous, and he was when he died for our sins. We needed him, and we had 100% sin according to James 2.10 because even if you commit one tiny sin your entire life, you're guilty of breaking every sin, right? So what happened in this um, exchange, we call it, it's called the great exchange because great things were exchanged and because the exchange itself is just tremendous. So in this exchange, it was 100%. So when Christ was on the cross, on the cross, he was paying for our sins. What happened to him while he was paying for our sins? He became, the scripture says, sin. He became sin, the sin of the whole world. So when he was on the cross, our sin was imputed to him. It, it was imputed to him. So the righteousness, we can say, disappeared even though he was still righteous. He never sinned. In this context, we are seeing that he took all of our sin. So we would put the sin over here. And just as much as Jesus Christ took into himself the sin of the whole world, 100%. Just as that was 100% and complete, he has given us his 100% righteousness. So that's the exchange that took place. You can say, before, he was white and we were black. But in the exchange, he took all the black and we got all the white. See, there's no gray involved at any point in any of this. There is no gray at all. Not even a sliver. None. Okay? And so what's happened here is a complete ching-ching like at the store when you buy something and they ring it up and the old time cash registers would make that little ching ching sound. Well, today it's just a beep because they use computers. But what happens is that there is a completed exchange. You pay the money, you give them the credit card, you take the groceries or the bread and you've paid for it and you get a receipt. That's what happened here. It was a 100% exchange and it was by faith alone you believing in what he has done by the faith that he has given you. See, even the faith that you're using to believe what he's done, you have not done it. So don't ever, ever, ever think for one second that you can take any credit for this. If there's one little shred of a place in your heart that thinks that you deserve credit or can have any credit for this, you are so deceived and the enemy will use that to mess with you. So please clean that out of your heart, okay? This is a 100% exchange. It was black and white, and it still is. Sin or righteousness, they cannot intermix, okay? And so just a couple of red flags here um, we'll talk about in a minute, but I wanna just review. The righteousness that you have and that you are in Jesus Christ as a result of this, all of this that God has done, the righteousness we're talking about is not the way you were raised, how you tried hard in school to get good grades. All of this self-independence, human effort type of thing that we've been raised in, it has nothing to do with that. So please don't confuse that in your mind. This type of biblical righteousness is not, 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 not a thousand times self-effort. No, it's not self-effort. It has nothing to do with you, literally, except that you are going to, by the power of the Holy Spirit, exercise the faith that God has given you to believe this. 
See? In it, righteousness is not any kind of a performance ever, ever. Biblical righteousness is not so much behavior focused. Why? Because God is all about the heart. And when you focus on behavior, you're just trimming the weeds in your yard. You're not pulling them up by the root. And so this is why we can, in many ways, except for extreme cases, for this purpose, forget about the behavior and go to the heart, right? And also, biblical righteousness is not trying. It is not trying to be good. It is not trying to do better. It is not, let me have another chance, Lord. I can do it. No, none of that. And it's hard because that's all we've known and all we've done our whole lives. And so we have to ask the Holy Spirit to take me out of that system and let me abide in you. And furthermore, biblical righteousness is not striving. There is no striving involved. And there is no worry or fear or anxiety or concern about, have I behaved righteously enough for you today, Lord, so that you still accept me? That is not biblical righteousness. That All of these are living under the law. Living under the law where you think that you're God. See? And you've totally never heard of or totally forgotten James 2.10. That is a checkmate verse. Put that verse up on your bathroom mirror, on your dashboard. Put it everywhere. Memorize it. Internalize it. It will protect you from this. Okay? Here are the red flags. I want to go over real quick. There's six of them. And I went over this in the Deceptions About Righteousness video. Um, but I want just to make this point again, because we are so brainwashed by all of these lies or partial truths. So it is inaccurate to say that, number one, believers are filtered by or through Christ's righteousness. That is not true. When someone is saying that, oh, I'm righteous, but only because God puts on some Jesus lenses and sees me through Christ. That is not true. That would mean that 2 Corinthians 5.21 was untrue and Romans 5.19 and half of uh, most of the New Testament would not be true. Okay, number two, you are not just clothed in Christ's righteousness. Yes, he has clothed you with it, but it is also inside you and you are fully 100% righteous because of this, all of this that God has done. Regardless of your struggles, regardless of your behavior, regardless of your, if you're in a bad mood, regardless if you um, are in a mental ward or you're in jail, you're on death row, that is in many ways irrelevant, okay? Uh, number three, you are not righteous, biblically righteous, just because Christ is in you. Yes, that's true. He's in you, but because of this, Perfect and a 100% great exchange by faith alone. You yourself as a person being in Christ are fully 100% righteous. 24-7, 365. Your whole being is righteous. You are the righteousness of Christ. That is what happened at the great exchange. Number four, you are not just positionally righteous. That is just confusing. Um, that is not true. We have been seated with Christ in the heavenlies, literally in the quantum realm. Just because we can't see that and experience it and understand it in this dimension doesn't mean it's not true. It's just as true because the scripture says so. And it is not prideful to say that God has done what he has done. It is not prideful to say that, for example, I or you are 100% as righteous as Jesus Christ because of what Christ has done for us in his salvation package by faith alone that he has given me and you. That is not prideful. That, you know, that is, that is humility. Who is humble enough to receive that gift? That is the most expensive gift in the entire world. And you have to be very humble to receive that why how why do you have to be humble because you know you need it and you know without it they're going to be major problems see 
This is very humbling to receive this gift. And you have to be humble to receive it. So don't think it's prideful. It's not prideful at all. It would be prideful if you received it and gave yourself credit for it. That would be prideful. See? These are all just little things that can throw you off. Number five or number six, uh, another um, inaccurate lie or half-truth about biblical righteousness is that um, Christ's righteousness is credited to my account only. It's only been credited to my account over there or up in the sky or on God's tally sheet, but I'm really not righteous. See, look at my behavior. Look at me. Look at what I do. Look at what I think. See, the righteousness is nothing to do with you. Okay? So you got to come back over here to reality and remember the truth. Okay, so it's not filtered. It's not that you're clothed. It's not that he's in you. It's not positionally. It's not prideful. And it's not just credited. It is credited. Christ does live in you. He has clothed you with his righteousness. Uh, those are true, but they're just one part of it. You've got to see the big picture that you are righteous if you are in Christ. If you are in Christ, remember the black and white? You are 100% righteous. If you are in Christ, you are 100% righteous 24-7-365, regardless of your behavior, regardless of your moods, regardless of anything that's going on inside you or around you. It's black or white. You have 100% sin or you have 100% righteousness. If you're a believer, you're here. See? You are in Christ. There is no sin in Jesus Christ. None. There is no sin in Jesus Christ. And you are in him by faith. Okay? So I just wanted to make this point because there's so many little tricky things out there that want to lead you astray and minimize the grace of God. They want to minimize the grace of God. The demons assigned to you and the spirits, they are... That's their job, 24-7, is to get you off course. And I'm here trying to keep you on course, okay? So I hope that's helpful. Remember that the righteousness that you have and are in Jesus Christ is all from God. It's all from Him. It has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with me. Nothing. This is the great exchange. It has already happened and you enter into this by faith, by exercising the faith that is already inside you that God has given you. I'll tell you what, if you are struggling with this, or you say if you commit a sin or you do something, one thing you could really do is stop, stop the freak show, and you could go to your kitchen and you could get a cracker you could get some juice or some wine and you could have communion right there. And you know what? What is communion all about? Communion is all about remembering what Christ has done. And it will take you right back into reality when you take communion, the blood and the bread, and you remember him. Remember what he has done. So you can say, oh yeah, it's not about me. I was, I was moving a little bit over here and I'm getting mixed up. Or I was believing something down here. But I need to come back to communion to remember Christ. That's the 100% purpose of communion is to get back in alignment with this. Back in alignment. So that would be a great idea that you could do if you wanted to break out of an old habit and do something refreshing. That might be a great idea, okay? So I hope this is helpful, and I hope that you'll remember biblical righteousness. It's not what all the rumors are out there. It's not what people will say and things you will hear. you got to guard yourself against that because they will creep in and will contaminate your faith, and you will be minimizing the grace of God. The Holy Spirit will be quenched and grieved. All right, so I'll see you guys soon.